Chemotaxis from chemo plus taxis is the movement of an organism in response to a chemical stimulus. Somatic cells, bacteria, and other single-cell or multicellular organisms direct their movements according to certain chemicals in their environment. This is important for bacteria to find food e glucose, by swimming toward the highest concentration of food molecules, or to flee from poisons e phenol. In multicellular organisms, chemotaxis is critical to early development e.g., movement of sperm towards the egg during fertilization and subsequent phases of development e.g., migration of neurons or lymphocytes as well as in normal function and health e.g., migration of leukocytes during injury or infection. In addition, it has been recognized that mechanisms that allow chemotaxis in animals can be subverted during cancer metastasis. The aberrant chemotaxis of leukocytes and lymphocytes also contribute to inflammatory diseases such as atherosclerosis, asthma, and arthritis. Positive chemotaxis occurs if the movement is toward a higher concentration of the chemical in question, negative chemotaxis if the movement is in the opposite direction. Chemically prompted kinesis randomly directed or non-directional can be called chemokinesis. Topic: History of chemotaxis research. Although migration of cells was detected from the early days of the development of microscopy by Leeuwenhoek, a Caltech lecture regarding chemotaxis propounds that erudite description of chemotaxis was only first made by T. W. Engelmann 1881 and W. F. Pfeffer 1884 in bacteria, and H. S. Jennings 1906 in ciliates. The Nobel Prize laureate I. Mechnikoff also contributed to the study of the field during 1882 to 1886, with investigations of the process as an initial step of phagocytosis. The significance of chemotaxis in biology and clinical pathology was widely accepted in the 1930s, and the most fundamental definitions underlying the phenomenon were drafted by this time. The most important aspects in quality control of chemotaxis assays were described by H. Harris in the 1950s. In the 1960s and 1970s, the revolution of modern cell biology and biochemistry provided a series of novel techniques that became available to investigate the migratory responder cells and subcellular fractions responsible for chemotactic activity. The availability of this technology led to the discovery of C5A, a major chemotactic factor involved in acute inflammation. The pioneering works of J. Adler represented a significant turning point in understanding the whole process of intracellular signal transduction of bacteria. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Bacterial chemotaxis General characteristics Some bacteria, such as E. coli, have several flagella per cell 4 to 10 typically. These can rotate in two ways. Counter-clockwise rotation aligns the flagella into a single rotating bundle, causing the bacterium to swim in a straight line, and Clockwise rotation breaks the flagella bundle apart such that each flagellum points in a different direction, causing the bacterium to tumble in place. The directions of rotation are given for an observer outside the cell looking down the flagella toward the cell. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Behavior The overall movement of a bacterium is the result of alternating tumble and swim phases. If one watches a bacterium swimming in a uniform environment, its movement will look like a random walk with relatively straight swims interrupted by random tumbles that reorient the bacterium. Bacteria such as E. coli are unable to choose the direction in which they swim, and are unable to swim in a straight line for more than a few seconds due to rotational diffusion. In other words, bacteria forget the direction in which they are going. 
by repeatedly evaluating their course, and adjusting if they are moving in the wrong direction, bacteria can direct their motion to find favorable locations with high concentrations of attractants usually food and avoid repellents usually poisons. .In the presence of a chemical gradient bacteria will chemotax, or direct their overall motion based on the gradient. If the bacterium senses that it is moving in the correct direction toward attractant, away from repellent, it will keep swimming in a straight line for a longer time before tumbling, however, if it is moving in the wrong direction, it will tumble sooner and try a new direction at random. In other words, bacteria like E. coli use temporal sensing to decide whether their situation is improving or not, and in this way, find the location with the highest concentration of attractant usually the source, quite well. Even under very high concentrations, it can still distinguish very small differences in concentration, and fleeing from a repellent works with the same efficiency. This biased random walk is a result of simply choosing between two methods of random movement, namely tumbling and straight swimming. In fact, chemotactic responses such as forgetting direction and choosing movements resemble the decision-making abilities of higher life forms with brains that process sensory data. The helical nature of the individual flagellar filament is critical for this movement to occur, and the protein that makes up the flagellar filament, flagellin, is quite similar among all flagellated bacteria. Vertebrates seem to have taken advantage of this fact by possessing an immune receptor TLR5 designed to recognize this conserved protein, as in many instances in biology, there are bacteria that do not follow this rule. Many bacteria, such as Vibrio, are monoflagellated and have a single flagellum at one pole of the cell. Their method of chemotaxis is different. Others possess a single flagellum that is kept inside the cell wall. These bacteria move by spinning the whole cell, which is shaped like a corkscrew. <laughs> <laughs> Signal transduction Chemical gradients are sensed through multiple transmembrane receptors, called methyl-accepting chemotaxis proteins MCPs, which vary in the molecules that they detect. These receptors may bind attractants or repellents directly or indirectly through interaction with proteins of paraplasmatic space. The signals from these receptors are transmitted across the plasma membrane into the cytosol, where CHE proteins are activated. The CHE proteins alter the tumbling frequency, and alter the receptors. Flagellum regulation The proteins CHU and CHI bind to the receptor. The absence of receptor activation results in autophosphorylation in the histidine kinase, CHI, at a single highly conserved histidine residue. Qi, in turn, transfers phosphoryl groups to conserved aspartate residues in the response regulators Cheb and Che. Qi is a histidine kinase and it does not actively transfer the phosphoryl group, rather, the response regulator Cheb takes the phosphoryl group from Qi. This mechanism of signal transduction is called a two-component system, and it is a common form of signal transduction in bacteria. CHE induces tumbling by interacting with the flagellar switch protein FLIM, inducing a change from counter-clockwise to clockwise rotation of the flagellum. Change in the rotation state of a single flagellum can disrupt the entire flagella bundle and cause a tumble. <laughs> Receptor regulation CHEB, when activated by CHI, acts as a methylesterase, removing methyl groups from glutamate residues on the cytosolic side of the receptor. It works antagonistically with SHARE, a methyltransferase, which adds methyl residues to the same glutamate residues. If the level of an attractant remains high, the level of phosphorylation of CHI and, therefore, CHE and CHEB will remain low, the cell will swim smoothly, and the level of methylation of the MCPs will increase because CHEB-P is not present to demethylate. 
The MCPs no longer respond to the attractant when they are fully methylated, therefore, even though the level of attractant might remain high, the level of Gp and Cheb P increases and the cell begins to tumble. The MCPs can be demethylated by Cheb P, and, when this happens, the receptors can once again respond to attractants. The situation is the opposite with regard to repellents. Fully methylated MCPs respond best to repellents, while least methylated MCPs respond worst to repellents. This regulation allows the bacterium to remember chemical concentrations from the recent past, a few seconds, and compare them to those it is currently experiencing, thus know whether it is traveling up or down a gradient. Although the methylation system accounts for the wide range of sensitivity that bacteria have to chemical gradients, other mechanisms are involved in increasing the absolute value of the sensitivity on a given background. Well-established examples are the ultra-sensitive response of the motor to the CHP signal, and the clustering of chemoreceptors. Chemoattractants and chemorepellents Chemoattractants and chemorepellents are inorganic or organic substances possessing chemotaxis inducer effect in modal cells. These chemotactic ligands create chemical concentration gradients that organisms, prokaryotic and eukaryotic, move toward or away from, respectively. Effects of chemoattractants are elicited via chemoreceptors such as methyl-accepting chemotaxis proteins MCP. MCPs in E. coli include TAR, TSR, TRG and TAP. Chemoattractants to TRG include ribose and galactose with phenol as a chemorepellent. TAP and TSR recognize dipeptides and serine as chemoattractants, respectively. Chemoattractants or chemorepellents bind MCPs at its extracellular domain. An intracellular signaling domain relays the changes in concentration of these chemotactic ligands to downstream proteins like that of Qi, which then relays this signal to flagellar motors via phosphorylated CHE. CHE -P. CHE P can then control flagellar rotation, influencing the direction of cell motility, for E. coli, S. melilati, and R. spheroids, the binding of chemoattractants to MCPs inhibit Qi and therefore Che P activity, resulting in smooth runs, but for B. substellus, Qi activity increases. Methylation events in E. coli cause MCPs to have lower affinity to chemoattractants which causes increased activity of Qi and Che P resulting in tumbles. In this way cells are able to adapt to the immediate chemoattractant concentration and detect further changes to modulate cell motility. Chemoattractants in eukaryotes are well characterized for immune cells. Formal peptides, such as N-formal methionanol, attract leukocytes such as neutrophils and macrophages, causing movement toward infection sites. Non-acylated methionanol peptides do not act as chemoattractants to neutrophils and macrophages. Leukocytes also move toward chemoattractants C5A, A complement component, and pathogen-specific ligands on bacteria. Mechanisms concerning chemorepellents are less known than chemoattractants. Although chemorepellents work to confer an avoidance response in organisms, tetrahymena thermophila adapt to a chemorepellent, NETRIN1 peptide, within 10 minutes of exposure. However, exposure to chemorepellents such as GTP, PACAP38, and nociceptin show no such adaptations. GTP and ATP are chemorepellents in micromolar concentrations to both tetrahymena and paramecium. These organisms avoid these molecules by producing avoiding reactions to reorient themselves away from the gradient. Topic: <laughs> Eukaryotic chemotaxis. The mechanism of chemotaxis that eukaryotic cells employ is quite different from that in bacteria, however, sensing of chemical gradients is still a crucial step in the process. Due to their small size, prokaryotes cannot directly detect a concentration gradient. 
Instead, prokaryotes sense their environments temporally, constantly swimming and redirecting themselves each time they sense a change in the gradient. Eukaryotic cells are much larger than prokaryotes and have receptors embedded uniformly throughout the cell membrane. Eukaryotic chemotaxis involves detecting a concentration gradient spatially by comparing the asymmetric activation of these receptors at the different ends of the cell. Activation of these receptors results in migration towards chemoattractants, or away from chemorepellents. It has also been shown that both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells are capable of chemotactic memory. In prokaryotes, this mechanism involves the methylation of receptors called methyl accepting chemotaxis proteins. MCPs. This results in their desensitization and allows prokaryotes to remember and adapt to a chemical gradient. In contrast, chemotactic memory in eukaryotes can be explained by the local excitation global inhibition LEGI model. LEGI involves the balance between a fast excitation and delayed inhibition which controls downstream signaling such as ROS activation and PIP3 production, levels of receptors, intracellular signaling pathways and the effector mechanisms all represent diverse, eukaryotic type components. In eukaryotic unicellular cells, amoeboid movement and cilium or the eukaryotic flagellum are the main effectors e.g., amoeba or tetrahymena. Some eukaryotic cells of higher vertebrate origin, such as immune cells also move to where they need to be. Besides immune-competent cells granulocyte, monocyte, lymphocyte a large group of cells—considered previously to be fixed into tissues— are also modal in special physiological e.g., mast cell, fibroblast, endothelial cells or pathological conditions e.g., metastasis. Chemotaxis has high significance in the early phases of embryogenesis as development of germ layers is guided by gradients of signal molecules. Topic. Motility. Unlike motility in bacterial chemotaxis, the mechanism by which eukaryotic cells physically move is unclear. There appear to be mechanisms by which an external chemotactic gradient is sensed and turned into an intracellular PIP3 gradient, which results in a gradient and the activation of a signaling pathway, culminating in the polymerization of actin filaments. The growing distal end of actin filaments develops connections with the internal surface of the plasma membrane via different sets of peptides and results in the formation of anterior pseudopods and posterior uropods. Cilia of eukaryotic cells can also produce chemotaxis, in this case, it is mainly a Ca2 plus dependent induction of the microtubular system of the basal body and the beat of the 9 plus 2 microtubules within cilia. The orchestrated beating of hundreds of cilia is synchronized by a submembranous system built between basal bodies. The details of the signaling pathways are still not totally clear. Topic: <laughs> Chemotaxis related migratory responses. Chemotaxis refers to the directional migration of cells in response to chemical gradients. Several variations of chemical induced migration exist as listed below. Chemokinesis refers to an increase in cellular motility in response to chemicals in the surrounding environment. Unlike chemotaxis, the migration stimulated by chemokinesis lacks directionality and instead increases environmental scanning behaviors. In haptotaxis the gradient of the chemoattractant is expressed or bound on a surface, in contrast to the classical model of chemotaxis, in which the gradient develops in a soluble fluid. The most common biologically active haptotactic surface is the extracellular matrix ECM. .The presence of bound ligands is responsible for induction of transendothelial migration and angiogenesis. Necrotaxis embodies a special type of chemotaxis when the chemoattractant molecules are released from necrotic or apoptotic cells. 
Depending on the chemical character of released substances, necrotaxis can accumulate or repel cells, which underlines the pathophysiological significance of this phenomenon. Topic. Receptors In general, eukaryotic cells sense the presence of chemotactic stimuli through the use of 7-transmembrane or serpentine heterotrimeric G-protein coupled receptors, a class representing a significant portion of the genome. Some members of this gene superfamily are used in eyesight rhodopsins as well as in olfaction smelling. The main classes of chemotaxis receptors are triggered by formal peptides, formal peptide receptors FPR, chemokines, chemokine receptors CCR or CXCR, and leukotrienes, leukotriene receptors BLT. However, induction of a wide set of membrane receptors e.g., cyclic nucleotides, amino acids, insulin, vasoactive peptides also elicit migration of the cell. Topic. Chemotactic selection While some chemotaxis receptors are expressed in the surface membrane with long-term characteristics, as they are determined genetically, others have short-term dynamics, as they are assembled ad hoc in the presence of the ligand. The diverse features of the chemotaxis receptors and ligands allows for the possibility of selecting chemotactic responder cells with a simple chemotaxis assay. By chemotactic selection, we can determine whether a still uncharacterized molecule acts via the long or the short-term receptor pathway. The term chemotactic selection is also used to designate a technique that separates eukaryotic or prokaryotic cells according to their chemotactic responsiveness to selector ligands. Topic: <laughs> Chemotactic ligands. The number of molecules capable of eliciting chemotactic responses is relatively high, and we can distinguish primary and secondary chemotactic molecules. The main groups of the primary ligands are as follows. Formal peptides are D, tri, tetrapeptides of bacterial origin, formulated on the N-terminus of the peptide. They are released from bacteria in vivo or after decomposition of the cell. A typical member of this group is the N-formal methionyl leucyl phenylalanine, abbreviated FMLF or FMLP. Bacterial FMLF as a key component of inflammation has characteristic chemoattractant effects in neutrophil granulocytes and monocytes. The chemotactic factor ligands and receptors related to formal peptides are summarized in the related article, Formal Peptide Receptors. Complement 3A C3A and Complement 5A C5A are intermediate products of the complement cascade. Their synthesis is joined to the three alternative pathways classical, lectin-dependent, and alternative of complement activation by a convertase enzyme. The main target cells of these derivatives are neutrophil granulocytes and monocytes as well. Chemokines belong to a special class of cytokines, not only do their groups C, CC, CXC, CX3C chemokines represent structurally related molecules with a special arrangement of disulfide bridges but also their target cell specificity is diverse. CC chemokines act on monocytes e.g., RANTS, and CXC chemokines are neutrophil granulocyte-specific e.g., IL-8. Investigations of the three-dimensional structures of chemokines provided evidence that a characteristic composition of beta sheets and an alpha helix provides expression of sequences required for interaction with the chemokine receptors. Formation of dimers and their increased biological activity was demonstrated by crystallography of several chemokines, e.g. IL-8. Metabolites of polyunsaturated fatty acids Leukotrienes are eicosanoid lipid mediators made by the metabolism of arachidonic acid by ALOX5 also termed 5-lipoxygenase. 
Their most prominent member with chemotactic factor activity is leukotriene B4, which elicits adhesion, chemotaxis, and aggregation of leukocytes. The chemoattractant action of LTB4 is induced via either of two G-protein coupled receptors, BLT1 and BLT2, which are highly expressed in cells involved in inflammation and allergy. The family of 5-hydroxyacosatetraenoic acid eicosanoids are arachidonic acid metabolites also formed by ALOX5. Three members of the family form naturally and have prominent chemotactic activity. These, listed in order of decreasing potency, are, 5 oxo eicosatetraenoic acid, 5 oxo 15 hydroxy eicosatetraenoic acid, and 5 hydroxy eicosatetraenoic acid. This family of agonists stimulates chemotactic responses in human eosinophils, neutrophils, and monocytes by binding to the acheocosinoid receptor 1, which like the receptors for leukotriene B4, is a G-protein coupled receptor. Aside from the skin, neutrophils are the body's first line of defense against bacterial infections. After leaving nearby blood vessels, these cells recognize chemicals produced by bacteria in a cut or scratch and migrate toward the smell. 5-hydroxyicosatrionic acid and 5 acheocosatrinoic acid are metabolites of meat acid 5-Z, 8-Z, 11-Z eicosatrionoid acid. They stimulate leukocyte chemotaxis through the acheocosinoid receptor 1 with 5-acheocosatrinoic acid being as potent as its arachidonic acid-derived analog, 5 oxo eicosatetraenoic acid, in stimulating human blood eosinophil and neutrophil chemotaxis. 12 hydroxyicosatetraenoic acid is an eicosanoid metabolite of arachidonic acid made by ALOX12, which stimulates leukocyte chemotaxis through the leukotriene B4 receptor, BLT2. Prostaglandin D2 is an eicosanoid metabolite of arachidonic acid made by cyclooxygenase 1 or cyclooxygenase 2 that stimulates chemotaxis through the prostaglandin DP2 receptor. It elicits chemotactic responses in eosinophils, basophils, and T helper cells of the Th2 subtype. 12-hydroxyheptadecatrinoic acid is a non-eicosanoid metabolite of arachidonic acid made by cyclooxygenase 1 or cyclooxygenase 2 that stimulates leukocyte chemotaxis though the leukotriene B4 receptor, BLT2, 15 oxo eicosatetraenoic acid is an eicosanoid metabolite of arachidonic acid made by ALOX15. It has weak chemotactic activity for human monocytes. Sees 15 hydroxy eicosatetraenoic acid number 15 oxo ETE. The receptor or other mechanism by which this metabolite stimulates chemotaxis has not been elucidated. Topic. Chemotactic range fitting Chemotactic responses elicited by the ligand receptor interactions are, in general, distinguished upon the optimal effective concentrations of the ligand. Nevertheless, correlation of the amplitude elicited and ratio of the responder cells compared to the total number are also characteristic features of the chemotactic signaling. Investigations of ligand families e.g., amino acids or oligopeptides proved that there is a fitting of ranges amplitudes, number of responder cells and chemotactic activities. Chemoattractant moiety is accompanied by wide ranges, whereas chemorepellent character by narrow ranges. Topic. Clinical significance A changed migratory potential of cells has relatively high importance in the development of several clinical symptoms and syndromes. Altered chemotactic activity of extracellular e.g., Escherichia coli or intracellular e.g., Listeria monocytogenes pathogens itself represents a significant clinical target. 
modification of endogenous chemotactic ability of these microorganisms by pharmaceutical agents can decrease or inhibit the ratio of infections or spreading of infectious diseases. Apart from infections, there are some other diseases wherein impaired chemotaxis is the primary etiological factor, as in Shadiak-Higashi syndrome, where giant intracellular vesicles inhibit normal migration of cells. Mathematical models Several mathematical models of chemotaxis were developed depending on the type of migration e.g., basic differences of bacterial swimming, movement of unicellular eukaryotes with cilia, flagellum and amoeboid migration, physico-chemical characteristics of the chemicals e.g., diffusion working as ligands, Biological characteristics of the ligands attractant, neutral, and repellent molecules Assay systems applied to evaluate chemotaxis see incubation times, development, and stability of concentration gradients Other environmental effects possessing direct or indirect influence on the migration lighting, temperature, magnetic fields, etc. Although interactions of the factors listed above make the behavior of the solutions of mathematical models of chemotaxis rather complex, it is possible to describe the basic phenomenon of chemotaxis-driven motion in a straightforward way. Indeed, let us denote with phi Display style var phi. The spatially non-uniform concentration of the chemoattractant and with phi. Display style nabla var phi. Its gradient. Then the chemotactic cellular flow, also called current J. Display style J. That is generated by the chemotaxis is linked to the above gradient by the law J equals chi c phi display style j equals chi c nabla var phi where c display style c is the spatial density of the cells and chi display style chi is the so-called chemotactic coefficient However, note that in many cases, chi display style chi is not constant. It is instead a decreasing function of the concentration of the chemo attractant phi display style var phi chi phi display style chi var phi Spatial ecology of soil microorganisms as a function of their chemotactic sensitivities towards substrate and fellow organisms. The chemotactic behavior of the bacteria was proven to lead to non-trivial population patterns even in the absence of environmental heterogeneities. The presence of structural poor-scale heterogeneities has an extra impact on the emerging bacterial patterns. Topic. Measurement of chemotaxis A wide range of techniques is available to evaluate chemotactic activity of cells or the chemoattractant and chemorepellent character of ligands. The basic requirements of the measurement are as follows. Concentration gradients can develop relatively quickly and persist for a long time in the system. Chemotactic and chemokinetic activities are distinguished Migration of cells is free toward and away on the axis of the concentration gradient Detected responses are the results of active migration of cells Despite the fact that an ideal chemotaxis assay is still not available, there are several protocols and pieces of equipment that offer good correspondence with the conditions described above. The most commonly used are summarized in the table below. Topic: Artificial chemotactic systems. K 
chemical robots that use artificial chemotaxis to navigate autonomously have been designed. Applications include targeted delivery of drugs in the body. More recently, enzyme molecules have also shown positive chemotactic behavior in the gradient of their substrates. The thermodynamically favorable binding of enzymes to their specific substrates is recognized as the origin of enzymatic chemotaxis. Additionally, enzymes in cascades have also shown substrate-driven chemotactic aggregation. Apart from active enzymes, non-reacting molecules also show chemotactic behavior. This has been demonstrated by using dye molecules that move directionally in gradients of polymer solution through favorable hydrophobic interactions. <laughs> See also